What do you get when you come up with a fast food chain, PR marketing stunt, a scary as hell mascot, and somebody who really likes video games? You get these. Sneaking, big bumping, pocket bite racers. All right, so you're probably asking yourself, what the hell? All right, let me tell you about this stuff here. These three games came out about the time the Xbox 360 first came out, maybe about a year after, somewhere around 2006, 2007. Each of these little games here cost $5, $5 a piece. Now that was a steal because guess what? Not only did you get the Xbox 360 version, these games actually played on the original Xbox as well. And for $5 a pop, compared to like some of the Xbox Live Arcade games around that time frame, like uh, Marble Blast Ultra, Gauntlet, other games like that, $5 wasn't that bad. It was enough for people to take an actual chance on these games. Was it worth it? You beat the judge. Now look at this. This is the intro to Sneak King. Isn't this the creepiest thing that you've ever seen in your life? Just imagine if this was Ronald McDonald. Like, already I'm afraid to play this game. Now to be fair, what they're actually trying to do here is they're trying to make a game like Splinter Cell. Only in this game, you're the king and you're sneaking up on people to surprise them with Burger King food. I, I don't know what else to say. Oh, we're shooting basketball now? Do you do that in the game? No. Look at this. That's your, that's your front end menu. And here's the game. All you do is you sneak around the maps here. You've got like this forest setting, like for whatever reason, if you're on a lumber yard, you're the sneak king, you come up and you do a little dance and you give them some food. What the hell? What, what kind of dancing is that? And then you give them food and you're on your way. Now ask yourself a question. Are these all of the missions that you do? Are these all of the types of missions you do? Do you maybe go through the fast food restaurants? Do you maybe go through the drive through No. You just sneak around, you go in little boxes, you hide, you wait until people come up, you jump out, you scare the hell out of them, and you give them a Whopper. Not that Whopper, sicko. The sandwich. I, I, I don't know what else to say about this game. There's really not much else to say. All you do is you sneak around, you avoid those tiny little cones. That way, you know, that they can't see you because obviously they, they don't have that much to say about this game. And you give them food. Now, there's a couple of different types of missions. You're still giving them food. You may have different uh, time restraints, like you have to feed five people in two minutes, or you have to get uh, three flourishing um, surprises. But look at this, you can hide in leaves too. Because who doesn't want to hide in leaves and scare somebody with eating Burger King? I mean, I don't know. I, I definitely don't want to see the heart attack coming when the king jumps out at me. I mean, it's bad enough I'm eating their, their artery-clogging burgers. <laughs> this just only makes it even better, I guess. But if you survive enough in this, which, trust me, I played through this for about an hour and a half just to see what the next level looks like. And all it is is you're in a cul-de-sac. You're in a cul-de-sac with a bunch of houses, and you're doing the same missions. The only difference is that instead of hiding in like haystacks, you can hide in a trash can. But if that wasn't scary enough, take a look at this. Not only can you hide in trash cans, <laughs> this is just so creepy. You can actually go into first person mode as the king. Listen to that breathing. Oh my lord. Oh no. What's this? <gasps> Unsuspecting person. Better give him a sandwich. Oh my god. 
isn't this the most creepy thing ever? And people think like Splinter Cell is the creepiest kind of game ever. Or Outlast. Those games have nothing on this game. Like, just imagine trying to play this in VR as the king. Like, no way. No way in hell. Honestly, I'd like to try to say something else about this game. But there's nothing else to say. You're the king. You go around. You give people food. That's it. That's all that's in this game. Five dollars? Was it worth it? No. Let's take a look at the next game. Pocket Bike Racer. How's this for a menu? Blue screened king in front of a couple of different backdrops. Oh my god. There is actually some variety to this game though. You can actually pick a character. You could be a burger, you could be Winston the drive through guy. You can be Christina. I mean, <laughs> you could be a biker. And then you can be this one chick, not Jolly, but this other girl, which I think is actually the, is I guess you'd call it a cover athlete, this Brooke person. But who cares about them? Be the freaking chicken. The chicken is like the best thing you could possibly be. Subservant chicken. Look at this. They even got different kind of bikes here. Dare I say that this is an actual game that they actually tried on? Like, it boggles my mind. But let's, let's do this first level. Let's do the parking lot. In fact, I'll show you all of them. I'll show you a couple of different ones here anyway. But after you sit here and wait for like a minute for this game to load... I'm just going to skip it because it takes forever. Look at this. You get the Burger King parking lot. You can even go through the drive through though you can't order anything. But look at this. I am a chicken racing against the king and a freaking Whopper Jr. I mean, look at this. I mean, the control is garbage, but I mean, it actually resembles a game. I mean, it's crazy. Like, here's the outdoor one. Like... The, the control is so bad that I'm just all over the place. Now, I mean, granted, these are pocket bikes. They're not supposed to be the best in handling. But, I mean, I mean, you are supposed to actually be able to race these things. Like, I actually had to practice these courses a few times before I could actually stay on the track. It's that bad. I mean, I'm just all over the place. But, I mean, a chicken. You've got this Brooke person, which I feel bad for her. I mean, if this is an actual person, this person right there with that red jumpsuit. I mean, here's, here's like an outdoor, outside the castle kind of racetrack here. I mean, you're going underneath bridges and going around. Look at that. The king doesn't even care about the rules. He's just going to go wherever the hell he wants. It's like, I own this game. I own everything. I'm the king. I do whatever I want. Yeah. But I mean, like, come on. Suck on that king. Oh, somebody got me from behind. Jerks. Then you've got this rooftop construction yard site, which... I have no idea who uh, thought this would be an interesting racetrack. I mean, I can think of so many different ones. Look at that. I got a big stoppy achievement. Now I have this game on my record forever and ever. <laughs> I mean, some of the achievements in this games are crazy. I mean, they actually, you have these, this game has some of those online multiplayer achievements where you actually have to race against people. But good luck finding people that actually bought this game. Now, granted, this game came out so long ago, but... Look at this. Now they have the yellow brick road with cheeseburgers everywhere. It's the Tender Crisp Bacon Cheddar Ranch. I mean, I don't even know what else to say. I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> I, I mean, I never had the sandwich when it first came out. I never even tried it. But the fact that they took the name of a burger and made a racetrack after it. I mean... <laughs> It, it's either genius marketing or somebody just like totally ran out of ideas and like, oh, the Bacon Cheddar Ranch, let's be creative and call it the ranch, you know, racetrack. I mean, at least the game has some kind of like Mario Kart-ish, you know, feel to it with like the different power-ups and things like that. But, uh, I mean, I guess if, if you were going to spend $5 on this game, at least it's better than Sneak King. All right, so that's Pocket Bike Racer. I already showed you Sneak King. Now I showed you Pocket Bike Racer. Oh, and by the way, that was all of the tracks for Pocket Bike Racer. And funnily enough, you could actually play this game online if you actually had people that owned it and you could play on it.
both on Xbox 360 and the original Xbox when that came out. It's pretty crazy. But that leaves us to the last game. Now, did we save the best for last? Big Bumpin'? Let's find out. Oh, great. So we have an opening with him behind the counter. At least there's a couple of different modes here. There's rides, tournaments, garage, and characters. You got the broiler, the deep, King's Court, Monsoon of Doom, Icebox. And there's actually different modes in this game. I mean, you can do single player and multiplayer, which if you actually can have it your way, as Burger King suggests, multiplayer is the best option. At least they give you the option for local multiplayer, considering nobody's going to play this game online anymore. But this is Icebox, and it's kind of like if you ever played uh, Mario Party, for example, it's a game where you want to try to hit the puck into the other person's net. Uh, so you kind of just want to bump into everybody and everything and try to get the puck in the net here. I mean, it's actually not that bad of a game. It, it's pretty fun, actually. Uh, you want to try to kind of boost around and get the puck going the other side. The fact that they have these different, like, little power-up things here, like this one ton, where it basically just makes the thing impossible to hit. So if, like, you get this power-up while the, uh, the puck's, like, moving towards the other person's net, like, it's impossible to stop. So it really does liven up the party atmosphere with it. I Honestly, I think they did a decent job. Here's the broiler. Now, this is the last man standing. So basically, you have a small little island that everybody has to stay on top of. In fact, in the Mario Party 2, they called it Big Bumpin' or Balls Bumpin', something like that. You basically are rolling around on a ball and trying to knock everybody off. Same kind of principle here. So you've got all the four different people right here, and he's going to try to knock each other off. I mean, this is where you kind of see how dumb the AI can get, though. As you can see, somebody just runs right off, and all I had to do is pop that guy. Boom. Done. Monkey Dude 22 wins. I am the king. <laughs> now we go back to the icebox. Here's a different kind of thing. It's like the big bumping thing where you want to knock them off. The difference is, is you kind of have a health meter here. you got the little dots underneath the name. And if you hit them in the corners or hit them into the sides, you see these little saw blades. And these things kind of just knock their health down ever so more uh, than just bumping into somebody here. You can see some people get wrecked by these saw blades here. Uh, but here's another one. This is also the uh, the King's Court. This is another kind of a hockey mode here where you just kind of bump in the puck into the other person's net. So actually, believe it or not, out of all of the Burger King games, this is probably the best one. If I was going to spend $5 on any of these games, this would probably be the one. Now, these games were actually supposed to be retail releases. They actually wanted to put these games on store shelves. And they actually wanted, you know, a lot of people to get these games aside from picking them up at Burger King for five bucks a pop. Now, I bought these games when they first came out for five dollars a pop. I played them once. Big Bumpin' was the only game I could actually get my friends to actually play. They probably played Sneak King or looked at it for just a few seconds and was like, what the hell is this? And then we never touched it again. But Big Bumpin' was always the game we actually came back to when we played time and time again. It was actually really fun. And to this day, it still is pretty fun. Now, good luck trying to find anybody playing online. Believe it or not the online servers still actually work for this game. You can still actually host an online game. But if you try to find somebody, you're not going to find anybody playing these games. If you're still actually wanting to try to find these games, you could still find them like at GameStop or eBay or Amazon. You probably pay about $5 for these games still. Uh, maybe you'll find some kind of bundle deal on eBay if somebody's actually interested in selling these games. I mean, who knows? Nobody would even want to keep these games for sure, except for maybe Big Bumpin'. But that's honestly my honest opinion about these games here. I mean, if you if you look at all of them here, you got Pocket Bike Racer, Sneak King, and Big Bumpin'. Pocket Bike Racer is kind of an eh for $5. Was it worth it? You get a little bit of fun out of it once you actually get used to it. It does have the local co-op. It does have the online multiplayer. Granted, nobody's going to play these games anymore. So if you're looking at that, you know, I, steer clear from it. I mean, if you find it for like $2 and you just want to give it a spin, eh, it might be worth trying it for 2 bucks. I mean, you definitely don't pay like anything above $5 for these games. I mean, they weren't even, you know, higher than $5 for sale originally. Um, sneaking... <laughs> 
honestly, I don't even know what to say about this game. I mean, people really buy it because they just like, wow, is this really as bad as people say it is? Yes, it is as bad as people say it is. For $5, I would have demanded my money back and I would have gotten a Whopper. Wasn't even worth it for five bucks. Wouldn't even touch it. It's an interesting novelty idea for sure. I mean, it's it's some one of those things that, I mean, I guess now it's collectible because, I mean, obviously they don't make these games anymore. And, you know, it's kind of one of those first kind of video game tie-in with a fast food chain. You know, they had the Yaris Xbox Live Arcade game, which was free. But, I mean, you know, these product placement games, they're, they're not really a thing anymore. So, um, big bumping. If you ever find this game, I mean, for $5, it, it rivals some of the Xbox Live Arcade games that are out there for maybe 10 or 15 bucks, honestly. And fun factor, it's actually not that bad of a game if you can get a group of friends that'll play with you. I mean, don't buy it for the online multiplayer. It doesn't exist. I mean, you could still play it online if you can find people, but good luck with that. So for $15 today, would it be worth it to buy all three of these games? I'd say no. For $5 for all three games? Maybe. It might be worth it to you. If you're definitely interested in checking them out, like I said, check out eBay, check out Amazon, check out GameStop. I think they still have them there as well. Uh, you might find them for a decent price, but it's honestly an honest opinion of the Burger King games, you know, one that most people are not going to give you. If you look on eBay or if you look on, uh, you know, YouTube, you're just going to find shock value videos that, you know, just try to hate on these games all day long. I could certainly see why they would do it on Sneak King, but honestly, big bumping, I would say this one's worth $5. So if you ever get a chance to try it, definitely give it a shot. I'm Monkey Do 22 Thanks again for watching this video. If you like this one and you want to see more of these kinds of videos, do subscribe to my channel as I post all the time. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments section which of these games you might like the best. If you've ever played any of them, let me know what you thought about them in the uh, comments section. Love to hear your opinions about those as well. If you know of any other obscure games that you think I might find interesting or want to try as well, uh, definitely let me know in the comments section as well. And uh, <laughs> as a side note, this is not a paid advertisement for Burger King. I don't make any money from Burger King. Yeah, that's, that's all I'll say about that. Anyway, thanks again for watching, everyone. To catch you in the next video.